Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case number 1134, Anderson versus Schultz. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Anderson, this is your daughter. Yes. And you're here as a nominal plaintiff because you are the owner of the car that was involved in an accident with the defendant's daughter. Yes. You were not present. You were not present at the accident. There were other passengers in the car, but you're merely here as owners of the vehicle. Right? Yes. yes. So I'm going to start with you. Tell me your first name. Uh, Winter Anderson. Winter, what was the date of this accident? Uh, July 27th, 2020. 2021. What time? Uh, around 6. 6 p.m.? Yes. Who was in the car with you? Uh, my friend, Alana. Where had you been? Uh, we were just up by the mall shopping around Target and driving home. And you're how old? I'm 16. Ever been in an accident before? No. What kind of car were you driving? Um, a 2013 Chevy Cruze. Is that the family car? No. Was that car purchased for her? Yes. When? March of 2021. Do you remember how much it cost? $5,900. Is there an outstanding loan on the car? No loans. Okay. Your first name is? Jaden. And how old are you, Jaden? 17. And who were you in the car with on July 27th, 2021? My boyfriend, Jackson. Is that this person? Yep. Anybody else in the car with you? Nope, just us. You were driving? Yes. Boyfriend in the passenger front seat? Yes. Where were you coming from? Uh, his hair appointment downtown. Where had you been before that? his house. What time did you get to his house that day? I was living there with him, so we had been there since the day before. How long had you been living with him at his house? We had been there for about a month. Who's we? Just me and him and his foster mom. Who were you living with before you lived with him? I was living with a family friend. Where did you get this car from? From my mom. When? Um, I think she had brought it to me the day before. Day before what? the day before the crash. We were just using it. What were you borrowing it for? So that we could go get Jackson's hair done the next day. Okay, prior to that, you didn't have the car? No. Okay, the next day, his haircut appointment was what time? We got done at 3.30, and, and it took three and a half hours, so noon. And you were finished at 3.30? Yes. Where did you go from there? I believe we went Just a second, just a second. Stand up. Your first name is? Jackson. Stand over there. After your hair appointment was over at 3.30, where did you go? Um, we were just in town driving around. We was about to head back to my house. You were just driving around? Don't look at anything. Look over here. Right here. Sorry, ma'am. 3.30. Think carefully, Jackson. You went and had your hair done. Yep. For three and a half hours. From 12 to 3.30. God, that's a long time. <laughs> Doesn't even take me that long to get my hair done, <laughs> and I'm about five times older than you are. <laughs> so at 3.30, you left the hairdresser. Right. And it was you and your girlfriend. Yep, correct. Not yep, that's a yes, perfect. Yes. She was driving because she had borrowed the car from her mother just for the purpose of taking you to the hairdresser. Yep, correct. So after the hairdresser, was your girlfriend supposed to return the car to her mother? Yeah, we were headed that way, headed towards the camper and then headed back out towards my house. Headed towards? Hermantown, where we live. You were going to return the car to her? Yep. What, yeah. yes, what time were you supposed to return the car to her? Say like five-ish. So after the hairdresser, where did you go? To the camper. To the that, camper? Yeah. What camper? Where her mom stays. Her mom stays in a camper. So you went to her mother's house? Is that on the way to her mother's house? Is that where the accident happened? Yes, ma'am. But the accident happened at 6 o'clock, and you were finished at 3.30. Is that what the police report indicates, that the accident happened um... at 6 o'clock? The police report actually says 7.50. Um, the time on my phone said 6.17, but they could have issued it later than that. So around 6, okay. 7. So what I want to know was, what were you doing sort of in between? You didn't go right back to the camper. You went someplace else. We didn't have a certain location that we went to. You were just driving around? Yes, ma'am. Did you speak to anyone else? No, ma'am. You didn't go to anyone else's house? No, ma'am. So the only people in the car, according to you, Jackson, between the time her mother dropped the car off at her house and the time of the accident, the only two people in the car were you and your girlfriend. No, we was with a friend, too. Oh. Now, <laughs> Jackson, now you're getting to it. Now you're getting smart. Now the smart part of Jackson is, is hitching up, right? Yeah. yeah. 
Correct. Been here a long time. <laughs> now you had a friend in the car. When did you find this friend and where? Um... Um is not an answer. Jackson. Pick, picked him up. Where did you pick him up? His house. Him and his girlfriend. At what point in the day did you pick your friend up in the car? Before or after your hairdresser's appointment? Before. So, in the three hours that you were getting your hair done, your girlfriend was with your friend? No, Your Honor. It's going to get more complicated, Jackson. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. OK, it'll all come together, folks. Just hang in there. <laughs> so let's go back, Jackson. Where did you get your friend from and what time? His house, and to be honest with you, ma'am, I don't have a certain time. Was it before or after you had your hair done? Before. So then if it was before you had your hair done, your friend had to be hanging around with your girlfriend for the three and a half hours that it took to have your hair done. Yes, we did not drop him off, though. What do you mean you didn't he, drop him off? He left. He got picked up. He left from the hairdresser shop? Yes, and got picked up. OK. Now, what was his name? That I do not wish to say. I don't give a rat's behind what you wish to say. You picked him up at his house, which means someone had to have contacted him. You had to contact him, or he had to contact you via your cell phone. So that means you have his number, and he has yours. And it would be on your cell phone from that date in July. What was his name? His name is... What's his phone number? That's in your phone. Oh, it's... Take out your phone. I just recently got a new phone. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, now it's going to all come together to everybody. I got it. Okie dokie. <laughs> Say nothing else. My boyfriend left the, the scene because he had a potential warrant That's out for that. his arrest. He ran because he was on probation and he was scared to get into trouble. <laughs> uh, Just a second. I'm not finished. Bradley Anderson and his 16-year-old daughter, Winter, claim Courtney Schultz and her 17-year-old daughter, Jaden, owe for car damages after Jaden ran a red light and hit Winter. By the way, what did you think you had a warrant out for your arrest for I, on July? I did what did not you have think? A warrant Just out. a sec. That's not my question. What did you think that you had an outstanding warrant for on the date of the accident? Ma'am, I did not think I had an outstanding warrant. I okay. know I did not. Just a just a second. Your last name is? Schultz. Miss Schultz, do you take any psychotropic medication? I take what? Psychotropic medication. No, but. For mental illness? No. No. So you don't suffer from delusions? No. Who wrote the answer to this case and swore to the answer in this case? Who did? Did you or did your daughter? Wrote the answer. The answer. Well, who signed it? Let's see. Let's look at here and see who signed it. Just. Who signed that? And that was before we... Jeff! I asked you we, a simple question. We quest. both signed it. Both signed it. Yep. You both read English, I assume. Yes. Okay. They went over Judge, it. They went over it with I them. don't care what they went over it. It's a quarter of a page. So you read it, you signed it, and you swore to it. Now, so I want to know who wrote this? Neither. You or your daughter? Well, somebody had to say who wasn't suffering from delusions. Oh, it was the daughter who wrote it, because it says... My mother's 2017 Nissan Rogue was destroyed. My boyfriend and witness had a potential warrant out for his arrest. That, that. Now, just a second. That's what she said. So when the person who wrote this said, my boyfriend and witness had a potential warrant out for his arrest, that's not saying he had some sort of a communicable disease. That's not saying he left his dog home or he left the light on under the chicken, whatever. I mean, I would never say that. I, that my boyfriend left the, the scene because he had a potential warrant That's out for not, his arrest. That was misunderstood. Just, just misunderstood yes, by whom? He ran because he had, was on probation and he was scared to get into trouble. <laughs> uh, that is why just a second. I'm not finished. OK, so now you're traveling, and your car gets clipped at an intersection. Yes. Makes a turn, goes across to another lane, slams up against a divider, and is totaled. Yes. And it is your statement that you had a green light. Yes. Now, you're the driver of the car, 
And now it's gonna all come together. And you say you were minorly distracted yes. because somebody left a gun in your car. That's... And just a second, that's what it says here. You can't make this up. You were temporarily distracted because somebody whose last name he doesn't remember, but whose address he knows, whose phone number he knows, which he can't tell me because he got a new phone. That's not how they communicated. Just, that's not what you communicated. That's not how... Was there a gun in the car? I said that's not how they communicated. Just a second. Was there a gun in the car? Yes, I said there was. Okie dokie. And at the accident, when the cars came to a stop, a Jackson took off. And you say... She was the one who ran through a red light. But you say you were minorly distracted because there was a gun in the car that you and your boyfriend just saw that there was a gun in the car and you were shocked. Now, where was this gun? It was in the back seat, Jack. Oh, kiki dokey. Now, you're driving along. Boyfriend is in the passenger seat. You're driving. What made you look in the back seat? I didn't. Jackson looked in the back seat to grab oh, a sweater and just realized a that it was back there. Jackson, you looked in the back seat for a sweater. Yep. Yep. In July. Um, in July. In Minnesota. Yes. Yeah. In I July. Live in Minnesota. In July. Yep. In July at six o'clock, you looked in the back seat for a sweater. Yes, Your Honor. Did That's you find what I'm a sweater? Just a second. Did you find a sweater? Yes, I did. Good. And the gun was under the sweater. Yes, Your Honor. Well, so that had to be your friend. It was his girlfriend's gun. Just a second. Well, you, the girlfriend wasn't in the car. Yes, she Just, said that. The girlfriend wasn't in the car. You said nothing about the girlfriend being in the car. You said you only picked up one friend from his house. That's what you said. You got to get your story straight. You yeah. just didn't listen. You cut yeah, him off before right. he could finish. Mr. Schultz. I'm not happy Mr. about the situation. Mr. Schultz. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You have to understand something. If you continue to make excuses for her and her poor choices, this is where you're going to spend the next 20 years before a judge. Do you understand? It may be in situations like this. It may be because you're going to have to take care of children for a lot of other reasons. But if you continue to make excuses for this and believe this nonsense, then you're going to be before people like me, probably much nicer, but before people like me who are sitting here in a robe for the next 20, 25 years. Is that what you want? Obviously, that's not uh, what I obviously want. Obviously not. That's not what you want. So... But I also know what... When I got the phone call right away, what was told to me when I was told what happened. You have to understand something. When her mouth moves, she's lying. <laughs> when right. her mouth moves, she's lying. She took your car the day before. It's probably your only means of transportation. You lent her the car for the sole purpose of taking the boyfriend for a haircut. Is that correct? And so she could use it for whatever they were going to do. I trusted her with my car, and I still well, trust her with my car. That's terrific. If she was going to lie to me... Just listen. Just listen. Why would she lie to me about there being a gun in the car? I mean, I, they told me this. <laughs> why would she lie to you? Because there were witnesses that called the police. That's why she would lie to you. Can I see the police report, please? Yes. I, I'd like that's... to see it, too, please. I've not seen it. Yeah, neither have I. Oh. I, I tried to get it, and it wasn't ready. So I would like to see it myself. What I'm telling you is, if you continue to listen to stuff that doesn't make sense, A, you said to me, there wasn't an outstanding warrant for his arrest. Maybe it was a probation violation. OK, probation violation. Well, yes. probation violation isn't something that you're born with. No. You're not born with a probation uh, violation. Warren, Just a second. You're not... You're not born with a probation violation. A probation violation means that you've been convicted of a crime and placed on probation as a sentence. And if you're in a car and there's a gun in the car, that's a violation of your probation in most jurisdictions. Understood. Do you understand? I so you understand, understand that your 17-year-old daughter is with somebody who's on probation. My boyfriend, to be exact. Uh, just a second. Who's on probation right. for a conviction. Correct. And is in a car... Your car... Yes. ...with a gun brought there, he says, by a friend's girlfriend. So I want you to figure out by a friend's girlfriend. Now, I've had a lot of passengers in my car. I'm 78 years old. I've had a lot of passengers in my car. You? You? Yes. You? Yes, ma'am. 
I bet you if I ask all of us who probably have a combined age of 200, whether they ever had a friend who left a gun in the back of their car under a sweater. Yeah, you should know what's in yeah. your vehicle at all times. And that I've... What I'm telling you is, if something doesn't make sense, even though you may love her, when you remember... What's his name? When you remember his last name and the name of his girlfriend, you can raise your hand. Otherwise, I don't want to see the hand. I don't want to hear you anymore. That's what happened. They know that that's what happened. You ran. There were witnesses. Now I'm reading the police report. You can sit down unless you raise your hand. And if you raise your hand, the only reason you're raising your hand is if you remember his last name and his girlfriend's name. And they asked May I ask don't, you a don't, question? I'm reading something. Don't speak. Your daughter, who, when her mouth moves, you have to find it suspect, told them it wasn't her fault. Did you tell the insurance company that the plaintiff ran a red light? Those were not my words, no. You know, now I know where she gets it from. Sixteen-year-old Winter Anderson has accused 17-year-old Jaden Schultz of running a red light and crashing into her car. Just so that you know, the police interviewed a witness because this is not per her statement because there were witnesses to this that called the police. Right, it was right downtown. There were witnesses that called the police. On 727, Schultz, that would be her, was driving through the intersection at Mall and Maple Grove Road. She had a solid red light at the time she drove through the intersection, per the witness's statement. Schultz, while in the intersection, hit Anderson, who was driving. Anderson had a solid green light. No injuries were reported at the crash. Other criminal charges were found for a passenger in Schultz's car. That would be he. Right. And those charges were possession of a gun. That's false. No, the charges were a probation violation. And they were dropped. Yup. Because the person who had the gun in the car it was claimed legal. it, claimed their gun and said that they... Just a second. Dead. I don't know any of that. It doesn't say any of that in here. So if that's the story, I don't know any of it. All I know is he ran with the gun. I mean, he's our He probation. ran with the gun that after was, the accident. And that was really dumb. Just a second. And from what I hear in both the complaint and the answer, your daughter was taken out of the car, placed in the back of a police car. Yes. I assume until they got the name of Jackson. No, until they detained him. They hmm? knew who it was. They, yeah. until they, they knew who it was. They just put me in the back of the car until he was found and detained. Just a second. How did they know who he was? Because just she a, told them. Because I told because them who ran. You, trust, you told them who he was. I mean, that's kind of what you do when the police ask who just ran out that car? Well, they wouldn't have actually cared if he was just a passenger in the car unless somebody said that he was running away from the car with a gun. I mean, when there's another just a second. bystander just chasing a... after him, I'm pretty sure. You know, I'm listening to you. It's hysterical. Aren't you listening to what's always yeah, somebody else's fault? Yeah, she's telling the truth. She's, she Aren't told the police. Oh no, I don't God. think it's hysterical. This I think it's a crack of crap. Trouble. I think the whole we thing We are is. in such... Do you think I'm happy we... about this? My car is totaled. We are in such trouble. They paid you for your car. Excuse me? Did your insurance company give you any money for your car? No, I still owe on my car that no, I No, 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 no. That's not what I asked you. I said, did your insurance okay. company give you any money? Don't show me your paper. I'm showing you I'm the insurance I'm asking paper. you, did your ins... I asked you a question. They did not fully cover my car. I didn't though. ask you fully. I said, did your insurance company give you any money for the car? Um, they gave the bank the money because I had a loan on it. So your insurance company gave you money for the car to pay down. I don't care if you don't have a car anymore, and I don't care if you still owe money on the car. You'll think twice about giving your daughter a car to use and having this sort of mess. But what you did was you listened to this story and when your insurance company called you and asked you what happened, your them. daughter, your daughter, who, when her mouth moves, you have to find it suspect, your daughter told them wasn't her fault. So while you had, oh, while no, you had no, liability... No, 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 back up. My insurance did not say it was not her fault, and she didn't say it was not her fault. We told them exactly what happened and waited for the police report. Just a second. You told them exactly what happened. Did you tell them that she ran a red... Because what... 
you say I here is she, hey, I'm asking you a question. I wasn't Wait there. until I finish. Who spoke to the insurance company, you or your daughter? I that did. would be you. I did, and they, then they talked to her. You spoke to them first. You're the insured. Yes. Very easy to find out. That's why we have phones. Did you tell the insurance company that the plaintiff ran a red light? I, That's either a yes or a no. Those were not my words, no. I said there was in a, my car was in an accident, period. Oh. I was not there, oh, so my. I cannot honestly say whether it was her fault or her fault. I wasn't there. Just a second. You know, now I know where she gets it from. It didn't skip a generation. Did you, in fact, speak to your daughter, and did your daughter tell you that the plaintiff ran a red light? She just told me there was an accident. <sighs> Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $5,900. We're finished. Thank you very Court much. Court is adjourned. Out. It is what it is, and then just have to deal with it. I'm happy with the verdict. I definitely uh, had my attention somewhere else at the time. Well, she bought the car herself, and I'm happy that she's gonna get a compensated for the car that got destroyed. Just wasn't thinking, I guess, and I took off at the accident. Like the second after the crash, just when I opened the door to get out, I saw someone run away and I was like, oh, this is not good. I'm glad she's gonna be able to get her car fixed. Uh, it was scary spinning around, but everyone was okay, so. I think that case could be a great lesson to parents because I know that parents love their children. They want to give them cars and vehicles and see them thrive and succeed. But I think that until your child shows you not just love, but shows you concrete evidence that they can handle an adult responsibility, such as driving a car, having possession of a car, I think parents should really think twice before they do things for their children out of love that they may not be ready for mentally, emotionally, you know. My interesting takeaway from that case was not so much that the mother believed her daughter, and her daughter clearly, it was, clearly it was a story. I don't know his last name. I don't know his girlfriend's last name. The gun was in the back seat. He took off from the front seat. There's a whole lot of nonsense. But the daughter was just a carbon copy of her mother. Yeah. That's, you know, very often I have cases where parents want to believe their children. That's what you want to do. You want, you know, you want to say they did the right thing. This mother didn't care yeah. because that was her M.O. As that my grandmother used to say, yeah, apple don't fall far from the tree. It's true, you have to set a good example if you want your children to succeed. Right. Want justice? Go to judyjustice.tv. Seated, please. Good morning, Judge. Case number 1103, Guidry versus Hughes. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, Ms. Guidry, I have several questions for you. How old are you? 28 years old. What kind of work do you do? I have a small online business, but I'm not currently employed right now. What is the nature of the online business? Cosmetics. You make any money at it? A little bit. I mean, I'm, I was just starting out very small. Other than your business, how do you support yourself? I do Uber like DoorDash, stuff like that. And before you became involved with the defendant, who were you living with? Uh, my brother and I had an apartment together. And then, what I gather, around 2018, you met the defendant. Yes. And then, in the summer of 2020, you became a couple. Yes, ma'am. According to you, in the summer of 2019, the defendant gave you money to put down on a car. Yes. How much money did he give you to put down on the car? He gave me a 1000 and when in 2019 did he give you the thousand? That was in September. Okay, one of the things that was curious to me when you decided to move in together, you said you moved in with a goddaughter. Yes, ma'am. Did she live with you during the whole time that you were living no, with the defendant? Not the whole time. Well, where does she go when she's not with you? Um, well, she was living with her mother, but some family issues, and then she came to live with us. Okay, well, then I'm going to get back to that in a moment. Okay. okay so. Gave you the down payment in September of 2019. 
Then you decided to trade in that car, use that car as a down payment, and buy another car. Yes, sir. And you bought another car that was in both your names? Yes, he convinced Correct. me to put it in. Both your names? It was in my name and her name, yes. Yeah, both your names. Right. So part of this case revolves around this car, because when you had some sort of a kerfuffle in May of 2021, when you went on a road trip with this car, listen, I've learned to avoid long road trips. The road long trip road trips not... with children, long road trips with mates. I, you it's, know, it's certain things terrible. are very stressful on a road trip, unless everybody can watch a movie on there. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you traveled from Texas to New Orleans, and from what I gather, there was an argument that was in New Orleans on Bourbon Street. You got annoyed. You left him on Bourbon Street, then he left you in New Orleans. <laughs> <That's>... No, <laughs> that is not the full truth. That's exactly. Just a, how it went. You had a fight in New Orleans, not in the car, outside of the car, in a restaurant, on the street. No, the it street. was on the street. He was yelling at me in front of everyone about something so insane. And I asked him multiple times, can you chill? Yes. We're trying to enjoy my birthday. It was my birthday. It was the day after my birthday. Okay. And he would not chill. So I was like, you know what? Let's just go because you killed my vibe. So let's just go. So we're... A she left on her own. Stop, stop, stop. Well, Don't. Try not to say anything okay. again. All right. Usually, if you let her talk, it's going to come down to the fact that she said, I lost my vibe. Right. Let's just go. And she left. Yes. I told him, let's uh, go. Well, not let's go together. <laughs> yes, let's go together. Let's go back to the hotel because I don't want to be here anymore. I'm not just going to leave him. We're in his car, first of all. And we no, came you back together. No, you weren't in the car at the time you had the argument. That's what you just told no, me. No, we drove there and parked. You were outside the car. And, and you said, just let's go. When you said, just let's go, mm -hmm. where did you go? I proceeded to walk to the car where we parked at. Okay, and where did he go? He was behind me, but then as I'm walking, I turn around and he's gone. So okay. I turn around and I go back to where we were initially Just standing. a second. Did you go back to the hotel? Yes. Did you go back to the hotel together? No. Did you go back to the hotel? No, I did not. Were your things at the hotel? Yes. Did you just leave them there? Yes. What things were there? My luggage. Did my you cell ever... phone and also my wallet. Well, how did you get those things? I ended up getting an Uber, not an Uber, but a Lyft, at about 5 a.m. Saturday morning back to the hotel to get my things. Is there any drinking involved during this time? That is correct, because oh. she was going to buy shh, shh, everything. Shh, 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 shh. Now I'm getting a clearer picture. Right. So you got back to the hotel at about 5 a.m. Was the plaintiff there? Yes, she was there. Okay, he comes back at 5 o'clock. He gathers his things. Mm -hmm. Do you have any conversation? Yes. He walks into the hotel room and he slams the door extremely hard and he starts yelling at the top of his lungs, why would you leave me downtown in New Orleans? And I was really scared, so second. I didn't say had anything. Had you taken the car back to the hotel? Yes, I did. Okay. So you had an argument with him mm -hmm. and you were not near the hotel. You were far enough away from the hotel to drive there. Yeah, about seven sure. minutes. I don't care. To drive there. And when you got back to the hotel, his phone was there, right? Yes, ma'am. His wallet was there? Yes, ma'am. All of the things that would have enabled him to get back unless he walked back... Yes, ma'am. ...to the hotel. So, in effect, you left him downtown and went back to the hotel. After looking yeah, for not him after an that, hour. That's either a yes or a no. Yes. You left him downtown. He then left you with the hotel, took the car, and went back to Texas. Correct. That was... Let's do it simply. This is not a novel. It may be a novella, but it's not a novel. So you stranded him downtown New Orleans. He stranded you in Louisiana. Yes. That's part of your case, how you got back from Louisiana to Texas. It's not my problem. That's your problem. You got yourself back to Texas. This whole case revolves around this car. And also my belongings that he disposed of. Okay. No. We'll get to belongings. Yes, ma'am. Make sure you tell me everything that's true. Yes. Understand? Because you see how fair I am? Yes. That can turn on you in a dime. Okay. All right? All right. Perfect. Kiana Guidry claims her ex-boyfriend, Tavon Hughes, owes for a car down payment travel costs, and the value of her belongings. You now have the car. Which car? The car that's in both your names. No, I no longer have the car. Where is it? I gave the car back. 
oh, you gave it back to the company that you bought it from. Correct. And there was a car loan on it? That is correct. And so neither of you are obligated under the car loan anymore? That is correct. Was there any loss on the car? Uh, yes. How much? About $3,000 of a difference between what was owed on the car and what it was worth. Okay. And did the plaintiff share with you the difference of what you lost on the car? No. The plaintiff never paid for okay. any of it. So I'm dismissing that part of your case that wants money for a car. When two people aren't married and they sort of complicate their finances, courts are disinclined to, unless there's some real unfairness. They get involved with that. You decided to do that. It was ridiculous. I keep telling people, I've told people for a quarter of a century, don't do that. It's ridiculous to get so involved. Yeah. Don't move in with your boyfriend and decide to solidify the relationship by getting a dog <laughs> or a pony or a car or an anything. It's ridiculous. He did the absolute right thing. He turned the car back because you weren't going to easily sign off on the car. No. He didn't want to be obligated on a car and be paying off on a car that you partially owned because your name is on the title. He did the absolutely smart thing turned in the car, took a loss, right. just like you did. So just he like withheld the car losses. from me. Yeah. I couldn't even say, hey, let me take the car. No. And I make no, no, no payments on it. I was you know, just, yeah. What did I tell you? Right. No, he wasn't going to do that because you weren't going to do that. You see? How would we he, Well, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you why. Because I've been doing this for a long time. If he gave you the opportunity, the loan company which now has two people on the hook for money, isn't going to say, OK, we're going to take the person who's a wage earner off the obligation to pay for this car, and we're going to let just you, who occasionally drives for Uber and has a small business, be the primary and sole obligor on this loan. No lending company would do that. That's why the smartest thing to do was to do exactly what he did. He has removed the obligation of either one of you to pay on this car. He took a hit on the loss, just like you took a hit on the payments that you made on the car since he put down the down payment for that year. So make believe you rented a car for a year and you had the use of a car for a year. I assume you had another car? I did. Um... OK, so you used the car. You used the car for driving Uber, according to you, occasionally. So the part of your lawsuit that requests money for the car is dismissed. Now we're going to get to that part of your lawsuit that asks for your property back. I'd like to know specifically, because this is what happened. You finally made your way back to Texas. He had stuff packed up. You say you got some of the stuff that was there, but there was a lot of stuff missing. You called the police. You went in with the police. They looked around. And you say that you left items in the house that belonged to you, that he's retained. So tell me specifically, and I don't want to hear about a hair dryer. I don't want to hear about makeup. I don't want to hear about two pairs of shoes or three pairs of jeans. That's not what this whole thing is set up for. What large ticket items do you say he didn't return to you when he packed your things? Like my business supplies. OK, business supplies. Tell me exactly what business supplies. So I had um, my eyelashes. I had about 80 pairs that I was selling. OK, do you know what happened to her 80 pairs of eyelashes? No, I do not. What else? <sighs> um, Make sure you tell me everything that's true. You yes. Understand? Because you see how fair I am? Yes. That can turn on you in a dime. OK. <laughs> All right? All right. Perfect. I mean, I don't have a ton of Just big... a second. What else? Mostly just my business stuff, really, but all of my other stuff, like I had just bought a bunch of clothes, a bunch of shoes, like literally everything that I own was in that house because we lived together. All of my stuff was there. I want you to tell me exactly what date and time you went to the house and he gave you some of the stuff that was there. Um, it was on July 1st. 7-1. No, June and 1st. The, June Sorry. 1st. And the trip was in May. Yes. The end of May, May 28th. Now, yes. when he gave you your things, what were they packed in? It was a wagon that I had. He had, like, a suitcase, and it contained some of... Oh, no, you mean a wagon that you pull? Yeah, the wagon that you pull. Okay. So 
In that wagon was a suitcase. Mm -hmm. What else? Inside of the suitcase, he didn't throw away my LED mirrors that I sell as well. Your what? LED mirrors. That's... I believe what you say in your complaint, which was your role was to stay home, take care of the house, not work, and he was providing for everything. So if he bought you a laptop as a gift, that's a gift. You're entitled to take it. If he bought you an LED, whatever it is, if he provided the income that provided this cash that paid for it and he gave it to you, that was a gift, that's fine. But he did return that to you mm -hmm. because those were gifts. So he wasn't saying, I paid for it, therefore it's mine. There was an understanding that he had that they were purchased with his funds as the source, but he recognized that they were a gift, so he returned it to you. What else was in the suitcase in the wagon? Bubble mailers, like mailers for me to mail out my products and... Okay, so he returned business items. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh is not yes, an answer. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Business items. What else was in the wagon? That's really all I can remember. Just a second. Were there any clothes in the wagon? Any clothes? No, ma'am. The only clothes that I had was the clothes that I went to New Orleans with. Okay. Where were the rest of her clothes? The other clothes that she did have, she had already gotten her clothes from the apartment. We had what? been back and forth with issues, and so she was in and out of the apartment all the time. When you say she was in and out of the apartment all the time... Going to her brother's house and... She would go to her brother's house and right. take clothes. When you left for New Orleans, she had a lot of stuff at her brother's house? Is that what you're telling That's me? That's correct. Okay. The things she had at the apartment, she took with her. To New, to New Orleans. Orleans, except for these some business items Correct. that were there that you did put in the... Yes, that I gave to her when she returned to Houston. Okay. Do you have any proof that he acknowledged that he had property of yours in your home after the breakup that he threw away? That's either a yes or a no. Yes. I'd like to see it because, you know, my mind is always capable of being changed. Kiana Guidry has accused her ex-boyfriend, Tavon Hughes, of refusing to pay for travel costs and throwing out her belongings after they broke up. I'm curious where the goddaughter was when he you went on this trip to New Orleans and when you came back. Where was the goddaughter? She was with her mom, and he also disposed of her things as well. What I'm just not following is why sometimes with her mom, now you're back living with your brother? No, I have my own place now. The only reason why she was with her mom that weekend is because we went to New Orleans. Just a second. You have to understand, my background is family court. Mm -hmm. So if you say you moved in with him in Texas with your goddaughter, there's a family court reason why she wasn't with her mother. We never went to court. It was just a family thing, like, I took the responsibility of having her. There's he a reason agreed. for that. And I'm just curious what happened to her when you went on this trip to New Orleans. If she's not going to answer me, I'm going to let you answer me. Yes. Her. She was probably with her brother. That's where the little girl went when we went to New Orleans. We stopped in Lafayette, Louisiana, and dropped her, meet her mom. That is not correct. You really going to lie in court. She knows that's not correct. That is definitely I, correct. I, I, yeah. How long did she live with you? About a couple of weeks. Oh, she was only with you a couple of weeks. Yes. Not true. She was not with us more than a couple she of weeks. She was with us. We lived in the house together. I have a copy of the lease. I'm on the lease. I live at the house. I have a YouTube channel. I'm in the house every single day. Not you. I'm talking about your the goddaughter. Did, look, yeah. No, the kid she, did not live with, just, with us. For how long is my question? For a couple of months, like... Okay, not a couple of months, like... So she lived with you for a couple of months. What months did she live with you? I just would like to know. So she lived with us from like... Not like. I take from... out the word like. It's a filler word. Don't ever use it again. Okay, sorry. Except if you want to say I like you. Okay. But other than that, don't use the word like. She lived with you from when to when? From March of 2021. 2021. No. Okay. Until the breakup. Okay. Who is she living with now? With me. And you're living alone? Yes, ma'am. Do you have custody of her? I don't have court custody, no, ma'am. I have guardianship. You have guardianship I'm through a guardian. court? No, not through a court. Any reason why not? We just never went that route. It was just an understanding that she's gonna stay with me. Well, you know, 
you have to permanently plan for this child's future. Yes, ma'am. That's an important thing. I see that you have a certain affection for her, and it's fair for a child to know where they're going to be. Yes, ma'am. And if you're stepping in to do that, good for you, but child should have some sort of a plan. Okay. Now, did you dispose of any of Miss Gidry's clothing, shoes, anything else, even if you bought it? No. Do you have anything of hers in your home that belongs to her? No, I do not. And when I allowed the police officer to come through the home, I allowed him to go in every single room in that home to check it out to see if she had anything. Okay. And there was nothing there of hers because she didn't have anything of that. Because okay. she threw it all away. Okay. He doesn't have anything that belongs to you. Now, this is what you're asking for. Money owed for travel expenses. Those are the travel expenses that you incurred moving from Louisiana back to Texas because he took the car and went home. You had a fight. That's what happens. He just traveled shorter distance when you left him on Bourbon Street. Car down payment I've already dealt with. He did the absolute right thing by returning the car. Okay. He doesn't have any property of yours. He had all of my property. I do not I have any of right her house. property. Why right now, he has none of your property. He knows I don't have house. any of her okay. property. All of my clothes. I, just a second. Don't, 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 for her. don't argue. Everything. Just don't. Please do me a favor. Don't argue with me. Right now, I have to make a decision about who I rely on. And Mr. Hughes says, which is supported by his conduct, that big ticket items like laptops, which are expensive, which clearly he paid for, he gave to you. So since he gave you things that had value that he paid for, why would he keep your shoes? Why would he throw... No, 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 no. Don't say why. I don't answer questions. Do you have any proof that he acknowledged that he had property of yours in your home after the breakup, which would have been around June 1st when you came with the police, that he threw away? That's either a yes or a no. Yes. I'd like to see it because, you know, my mind is always capable of being changed. Okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. One, that's what I said on this. Okay. The only thing he says here is, I want closure. And that was on May 29th. You have to the end of next week to secure your things. He says, are, they will be disposed of. And this was on May 29th. And according to what I heard, I believe June 1st is the day you went there with the police. Is that right? Yes. That was within that week? Yes. yes. OK. Your case is dismissed. We're finished. Thank you very much. So Court is adjourned. Okay, so this man came after me. I cared about Kiana. I did a lot of things for her. And I told him, like, okay, well, you know, I like to be taken care of. Including, you know, paying for her things that she didn't have. I like to be provided for. He agreed to everything. He even... And that's the way it was. Made sure I had money on a specific day, every day. She was taking advantage, exactly. He did that on his own. I got closure that I've been wanting for a very long time, so I'm happy with the verdict. So, what do you think? You know, I've, number one lesson I've learned since being here, don't co-sign, don't co-own anything with anyone that's not your legally married husband, wife, partner, because these problems arise all the time, and courts don't want to be involved in people's petty relationship drama. Right. We don't want to decide whether those are your underpants <laughs> or somebody else's underpants. Exactly. Uh, you know, my father used to say, keep it simple, stupid. Use the kiss it principle, keep it simple. <laughs> You're absolutely right. I'm glad you learned the lesson. Want justice? Go to judyjustice.tv. is simple. Mrs. Lager, you want your money back and you want to return two rings that you bought from the defendant. Defendant says, no backsies. You're right, Your Honor. Well, I know that that's your position. So I'm going to ask you, Mr. Schlesser, a couple of questions. What I get from your answer is 
that several years ago, a relative of yours got arrested. Yes. And there was bail set, rather high bail. Yes. And you posted that bail yes, for this relative. And in order to ensure your repayment, this relative gave you two rings, two, yes. a man's ring and a woman's ring, to hold as collateral. And I assume that this relative never paid you back. Actually, he did pay me partial. Oh, how much partial? 3000 And how much was the bail? 8000 Okay, So you were down five. I was down five. And in order to recoup some of that money, I assume that you made an arrangement with this relative that you could sell the rings. Yes. That's what I gather. And so in 2020, well, let's go back a second. In what year did you take possession of the rings? Approximately five years ago, Your Honor. So you've had them in your possession for quite a while. Yes. Where have they been in your possession? At my house in the safe. Sometime in 2020, you're going to tell me the month you decided to list them on the internet for sale. What month in 2020? I don't recall, Your Honor. Well, let's try to think hard. I could probably look in my phone and tell you according to the marketplace. Perfect. Around October 26th of 2020. Do you have the ad there that you placed? Yes, I do. I'd like to see it, please. Actually, you can get rid of my, my phone. And here is also pictures of the posting. So you listed them for what, $4,500? I listed them, Your Honor, for $5,000. Well, this says $4,500, October 26th. I had reduced the price, not knowing what the value was. Uh, just listen to me. Let's not editorialize this. You listed them for what price? The original marketplace list was for $5,000. Okay. And just a second. And when was that? Approximately two months. Not, not approximately. I asked you a question. I said, what did you list them for? And you said, I'm going to show you. You said, I listed them on October 26th. October 26th, it says $4,500. I want to know how long they had been on Marketplace. When did you first list the rings? I don't know the exact, exact date, but I would say probably three months prior to that. OK, so maybe sometime in July. Approximately, yes. Of 2020, you listed them for sale for $5,000. Yes. And then in October, you reduced the price to $4,500. Yes. And nobody bought them. Right. On what date did you contact the defendant? April 5th. Of 2021. Of 2021. So now they've been on the market July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. 10 months. Yes, Your Honor. Without so much as a nibble. No, I had different bites, but people that- Show me on here where you had bites. Um. I have to have the phone. It should be right on here. Different ones that contacted me. Well, Dale, right there is one of them. But to see all of them. Did anybody offer you a firm price for them? No. Prior yeah. to the plaintiff offering you $3,000? No. OK. I, so oh, what? He actually had them listed for $3,000 when I first May I see it. Do you have it? I don't have it saying exactly 3000 but I do have in our messages, uh, he did change the price, and it does say right here that he changed the price may on I, it. May I see that? Mm -hmm. Did you reduce the price to $3,000? I did, Your Honor. OK. In what month did you reduce the price to $3,000? Right before I had them appraised. Just, uh, uh, listen, you're editorializing to me, sir. I, had I just want the month and day that you reduced the price to $3,000. Right before she contacted me, probably a week prior to that. You contacted him on April, April 5th. 5th. When you contacted him, you had seen pictures of the rings online? I did. Were you getting married or were you married? We were about to get married. So this was a big purchase for you? It was a big purchase for me. Is it your first marriage? It is. We've been together for 20 years. Oh, well. Yeah. That's nice. Takes deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep. Look happier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's happy. Yeah. Oh, he's, is he happy? Oh, he's yeah. happy. Is he happy? He should yeah. tell his face. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> anyway, you reduced the price to $3,000. The plaintiff called you. She said, I love the rings. I want to come out and see them. Then you took the rings to have them appraised. Now, let me understand this, sir. This is what you want this face to believe, that you've had these rings in your possession for five years. You took them as collateral for a loan. They had been sitting in your safe, according to you. You put them on marketplace to sell. For 10 months, they didn't sell. All of a sudden, you had an aha moment after you got somebody who said, you know, listen for 3000 I will pay 3000 I just want to come out and see them. And then you decided to take them and have them appraised. That's what you, I, that's what you want this face to buy. Yeah, sure. OK. Ever. All right. Well, good for you. In my contract, I wasn't going to give them the originals until the balance was paid. Just a second. Are you talking to yourself or are you talking to me? I'm talking to you, Your Honor. Well, I don't want to hear you until you show me the appraisal. Jessica Lager is accusing Keith Slesher of selling her two wedding rings, falsely claiming they could be resized. Now, you took it to an appraiser, a jeweler. Yes, Your Honor. And without having any conversation with me, do you have the appraisal from the jeweler? Yes, I do, Your Honor. I'd love to take a look at it. Thank you. What is this that you're giving me? What is this? That is the appraisal, what it cost me to have them appraised. I don't care what it cost. I want to see the, the appraisal, appraisal that you had done. What? I want to see the appraisal, not that okay, you took I them. I am looking for the copies of it that I have, Your Honor. In my contract, I wasn't going to give them the originals until the balance was paid. Just a second. But see, are they you were talking, going Are you it, talking to yourself or are you talking to me? I'm talking to you, Your Honor. Well, I don't want to hear you until you show me the appraisal. OK. All right, here they are. Okay, so now you take them and you have them appraised by this jeweler. They're not GIA certifications of the diamonds. They're a jeweler's evaluation of what these little diamonds were. And then you call her back and tell her that the price has changed to $5,000? I messaged her back and told her, before you drive all the way down here, I have had them appraised and they appraised at a lot higher than what I anticipated, that I couldn't sell them for 3000 that I wanted 5000 for them. And she said all she had was 3000 So at that point, I said that I would consider working with them. If they were that adamant about the rings, I would let them make payments to me. Can you explain to me why, in the five years that you had these two rings, you haven't had them appraised before you put them on Marketplace, before you tried to sell them for a year? I mean, you, you don't appear to be a stupid man. No, not if you not. have, If you have a product and you are unsure of its value and it's not your specialty and you want to put it up for sale, the idea is if whether it be a car or a piece of jewelry or a painting, you have it appraised. You go and you have it appraised and say, well, this is what the appraisal is and this is what I'm going to ask for it or this is what I'm prepared to sell it for. Right. That's what a thinking person does and you don't look like a non-thinking person. You took collateral for this loan that you made to your relative. You got him to repay part of it. You were selling the collateral to cover the other part of it. That all sounds like a thinking person. I have trouble thinking that a thinking person puts something on the marketplace without having it appraised first, makes a deal pretty much on the phone for the asking price, and then takes it to have it appraised. That just doesn't make sense to me. And if it doesn't make sense to me, it usually isn't the way it happens. OK. But this is not what the case is about. They came on the 6th. The 9th is when we actually went and met him. OK. So on April 9th, you went and looked at the rings. Now, I did. Kevin, can I please have the rings? I want to take a look at them. Thank you. Well, this lady's ring is very lovely. Isn't it? I love it. Yeah, it's really very lovely. If only it could fit. When you went to his house to try on these rings, they were too small for the two very of you. Very small, yes. Yeah, and did you, what? She couldn't even get that ring over her knuckle on her little I, finger. I, 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 you don't have to help me. 
Okay, I'm sorry. The ring's very small. Right. Did you discuss that with the defendant? Of course I did. I asked him if I could, if it could be sized, and he said yes. Well, just a second. This is Lager. I'm going to ask you this question. Did he tell you what he did for a living? Mm -hmm. No. So you're going to buy a pig and a poke from somebody without really an appraisal, because you're not getting these things appraised yourself before you're committing to $3,000, which I assume is a lot of money for you. Right. And you're starting a life together after 20 years. Tell your face you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> and clearly, this ring isn't going to fit you. Correct. Why would you ask somebody, what kind of work do you do or did you do? I'm a property inspector, Your Honor. He's a property inspector. He knows nothing about jewelry. Because he just had got them uh, appraised, and I asked him if, if, he, if he knew that it couldn't be a... Uh... Why would you ask a property appraiser if he knew whether a ring could be sized? Because they were his rings and... I mean, if, I guess I don't know. If it's know. property that is somewhere within his realm of expertise, I could understand it. But you're asking somebody who's selling something that clearly didn't belong to him. I mean, he could just say, I don't know, or no, or I'm not sure. He could have. Or... He could have. And that would have been fine. I mean, fine. But that's the... What would have been fine? If he would have said no, or I no, don't know. No, what would have been okay is if you said to him, I will only take these on condition that I take them to a jeweler and see if they can be sized in my size. See, at first I wanted to meet at a jeweler, and um, he said that would have been fine. But then a few days after we had made that agreement, he just took it upon himself to take them to get appraised, and then... No, 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 no. You wanted to take them to a jeweler. I wanted to meet him at a jeweler to, to start with. Yes, I wanted to. Oh. When you answered his ad, did you have a communication with him that you wanted to meet him, not at his house, but at a jeweler's? Yes, to start with, yes. Yes. Was that by text message or it, phone? It was message. I'd like to see it. It's on that first page there. Well, you say in one of these text messages, sir, she asks you what the sizes are. You say, I know the man's is an 11 only because it fits me, and the woman I'm not sure of another lady's ring is about one and a half carats, and it's wrapped in princess cut diamonds. The men's is just original cut diamonds. I don't know a lot about it. I have had them at a jeweler and got somewhat of an appraisal from them, but I didn't want to pay hundreds of dollars in insurance appraisal if I have sold them, I would pay that if you're that interested in them. And she says to you, we could meet at a jeweler. You don't need to spend extra money. I'm very interested. Are you open to meeting this Friday at 4? Yes. Well, why didn't you meet at the jeweler? I said, why didn't you wait and go with them to the jeweler? That's what she asked you to do. I mean, I don't care what this piece of paper says. It looks like crock of baloney to me. Jessica Legger claims Keith Schlesher refuses to reimburse her for two wedding rings that could not be resized. Okay. She says to you, we could meet at a jeweler. Well, why didn't you meet at the jeweler? Your Honor, I tried to take them rings to Rogers and Holland, where they, the store that they I'm were I'm asking from. you why you didn't meet her at a jeweler, as she asked. You said, could we meet at a jeweler? You don't need to spend any extra money, because you said you didn't want to. I'm very interested. And then your response is, I have dropped off the wedding rings at the jewelers, as you can see in the photo. To have them appraised, I will have them back Friday morning, appraised for insurance purposes. My question to you is, sir, she asked to meet you on Friday at the jewelers, which could have answered all the questions, whether the rings could be sized, right? Yes. Whether they had the value of what you say they were valued at. And for some reason, you chose not to do that. For some reason, you chose to go to the jeweler, allegedly, by yourself and meet them at the house on Friday, on the same Friday. Could, could you tell me why? I went to have them appraised. They wanted $200 a piece to appraise them rings. I wasn't about to pay that. They wouldn't buy back their own property. So okay. I decided to go to my own jeweler. 
and have them appraised. And I got them appraised for $125 per ring versus 200. Just a second, that's not my question. I said, why didn't you wait and go with them to the jeweler? That's what she asked you to do. I mean, I don't care what this piece of paper says. It looks like crock of baloney to me. So my question to you, sir, is why didn't you wait to go to the jeweler with them until Friday? Because I guess I wanted to know what they were actually worth. Then you should have done that in the five years you had them in your possession. But I also wrote a contract that she signed in an as is. I'd like to see it. You're more than welcome. Here's the contract, sir. <sighs> contract is a contract. Is a contract. You have proof that you have title to these two rings? Um, I got a letter from my stepson from him in prison stating that the rings were given to me as collateral. Well, he can only give his ring, can't give his wife's ring. It was his ring. No, you can give away his wedding band. That's your only out, madam. This is a contract that you signed. You understand that? Mm -hmm. The problem is that you took them to jewelers and you can't have them resized. Right. Is that, Honor, is that the that problem? Is, that is the problem. All right. The rings were given to Mr. Escalada for my bail money. Thank you for your time. I don't care. You wrote this contract. Yes, you I know, did. Do you know that I actually, she's stuck with this contract unless I can find a loophole for her, which I am, um, fortunately, I can because you have to be able to show me title to the property. There are two rings here. There's a man's ring and there's a woman's ring. And your relative, and I'm not gonna say, whoever it is that gave you these rings, I don't know whether they had authority to give away the woman's ring. I have no idea. The woman's ring is the expensive one. The woman's ring allegedly has the solitaire diamond that's a carrot, that's a carrot and has some stones around it. That doesn't belong to a guy. It was given back to him Just by his second. wife. Just a second. I don't know that. And you don't have anything to prove that. I guess you have a letter from him saying, I gave you the, the rings as collateral, but there's nothing here that says that he gives you permission to sell them. I guess I had Just no a second. There's nothing here that gives you permission to sell them. Well, he did verbally. <laughs> for, what, for what good that is. Perfect. Sometimes, the, Honor, sometimes written contracts. She also contract, said that she has a... Sometimes contracts. You wrote this contract. Clearly, you wrote this contract. You're the one who wrote in this contract. The sale and transfer of this property is hereby made on an as-is condition, without any implied warranties, with no recourse to the seller, provided that the seller can issue proof of title to the property without any liens or encumbrances. That's what I'm putting to you, sir. She wants to give you the rings back and she wants her money back. And you paid him $3,000. So you have to show me proof of title to these rings without encumbrances. And I don't think That's you can do that. That's the only proof that I can and you can't, your honor. And, and you can't do that. Right. And they've had these rings for a couple of months. You've had them for five years. So, you know, they can go back to eBay or wherever you put them. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $3,000. You count the claims dismissed. We're done here. Thank you. Courts adjourned. I'm so happy because I knew that he was just a scammer and I feel like he tried to scam me from the start. They called my jeweler. One question they did not ask the jeweler is whether them rings could be resized. When I seen the rings to start with, I was just like in love right away. I wanted to have them. She tried to put it on her little finger and it wouldn't even go over her first knuckle. Because he had told me that they could be sized. Well, stupid is what stupid does. I just feel like he was trying to scam me. Oh, I would have thought that they wouldn't have bought them. But I had a contract. Because they couldn't fit me. I got rings that can't fit. What's the point of that? So Sarah, this is a perfect example of let the buyer beware. If it looks like too much of a bargain, it's usually not a bargain. You want to spend $3,000 for rings, probably should buy them at a reputable place. You always take a risk when you buy things online. In this case, there was a contract. In that contract that the defendant wrote, he said he had to produce proof of title. So I was able to do the right thing. and. Bottom line is the law is supposed to be doing the right thing. And at the end of the case, the just thing is supposed to happen. They got their money back. He'll get his rings back. He can try to sell them again. But hopefully enough people will watch this that they'll be careful about buying expensive items that they know nothing about. Want justice? Go to judyjustice.tv.
Come to order. Have a seat, please. Good morning, Judge. Good morning. Case number 1053, Gilbert versus Gilbert. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Gilbert, this is your son. Correct. And the young lady with him is his wife. Correct. This is your claim. There was a time that there was some domestic difficulty in your son's home. At that time, he came to live with you. You claim that during that time, you made a loan to him for an attorney. Correct. And also extended another loan for him for a car. Correct. Your son and his wife ultimately reconciled, and you claim he stopped paying on the initial loan for an attorney and the car altogether. Correct. You also claim that at some point, your daughter-in-law filed a restraining order against you. Correct. A restraining order that the allegations were false, and she didn't show up at the hearing, and that was dismissed. Correct. Okay. So I'm going to start with you, Mr. Gilbert. When were you and your wife married? We got married um, November 4th of 2019. And you have children together? Yes, ma'am. Two? Yep. How old are they? My oldest son is four, a uh, little girl that just turned one. So I gather that you and your wife were in a relationship well before you married. If you have a four-year-old, how long have you been living together? Uh, we've been living together for about six years now. Have you been living together independently on your own in your own home? Yes. In what month and year did you and your wife separate? Um, as far as after we were married, we separated January of 2021. When you and your wife separated, where did you go? I went to stay with my mother for a brief period until I was able to find something in town. Give me the date that you went to live with your mother. It would have been the first week of February. How long did you stay there? I was there probably about four days. Four days? Yes, ma'am. Why do you were with your mother? And I assume that the separation with your wife was not an amicable one. Correct. You had two children. Were you seeing your children? When I first separated, yes. There, after about two months, no. Why? There was a restraining order that was put against me from my wife. So for the first two months, everything was okay, and you saw your children? Yep. Not, yep, yep is not an answer. Yes is yes. an answer. And what did your wife allege in the restraining order? That I was stalking her. Were you? No. Did she withdraw the restraining order? Yes. How much after she filed it? I had to actually get a lawyer in order to get the restraining order removed. You went to a hearing? Yes. And was the restraining order denied? Yes. So the lawyer was helpful? Yes. Did your mother give you money for the lawyer? Yes. Now, at that time, you were living on your own? Correct. So you had to have gone to your mother and let her know that you had this restraining order in place? Yes. Do you remember on what date you were served with the restraining order? Uh, the second week of February. I'm confused. You said you separated and you went to live with your mother mm -hmm. around the first week in February. Yep. Yep is not an yes. answer. And I asked you about visitation after you separated and you said the first two months were okay. That would be February and March. Correct. But you just said you were served with the restraining order the second week in February. Correct. Well. Did the restraining order stop visitation? No. Okay. So the restraining order, you continued to see the children? Yes. Until what date? Would have been end of February. Well, that's just a couple of weeks. Yes. So you were mistaken? Yes. Did you have a hearing at the end of February? No. Well, you're going to have to explain that to me, Mr. Gilbert. If she filed the restraining order the second week in February, is that when you filed it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. And usually when you file a restraining order, you appear before a judge. Did you appear before a judge? Yes, ma'am. And did you ask that your husband stay away from you? Yes, ma'am. And the children? No, ma'am. Not the children? Not the children. So when the restraining order was first issued, it was just staying away from you? Yes, ma'am. When did you change that and request that he stay away from the children? I did not request that he stay away from the children um, because we have children together. It's not my, our children's just, fault. Just a second. Well, your husband says that it became difficult for him to see his children. And I want to know when that was because I have to figure this lawyer business out. When and under what circumstances did it become difficult for him to see his children? It was the month of March. Um, he and I were having some disagreements and arguments that was really frustrating me. I was obviously a single mom at that point in time and I just needed some time away from him and get, get the kids together so that way the kids can not see mom so upset. So I 
stop letting them see him because it was upsetting me with how much my son was asking about his dad and how much he missed his, his dad. And so eventually we just kind of came to an agreement on things. Well, you didn't come to an agreement on things. Mr. Gilbert, did you agree not to see the children? No. So you must have asked for a modification of the restraining order. It was dropped. Well, was it dropped in March? Uh, it was dropped at the completely by the end of February, I believe, totally. Well, I want to know why it is he wasn't seeing his children. Did you agree not to see your children? No. I was trying to, the way I was seeing his children was through her mother. And after a period of time, um, her mother was not answering any questions as far as when I would be able to see them, when I could pick them up, so on and so forth. So that's when you decided to retain an attorney? Yes. In March? Yes. Now I'm getting the picture. So the two of you weren't talking, you were talking through an intermediary. The intermediary was her mother. Correct. Her mother stopped responding to your calls to see the children, which is when you retained, the retained attorney. an attorney. So that's when you went to your mother mm -hmm. because you didn't have money. Right. And I'd like you to tell me what the conversation was with your mother. When I went to my mother, I explained to her as far as a retainer fee was required for No, tell me what you said to her and what she said to you. I went to my mom's house and I told her, tell me what you told her. I told her that I haven't been able to see the babies. I need to get a lawyer to get something going so I can see my children. And what did she say to you? She said that she could help me out, but she didn't have the full 1500 in which case I You had... told her it was $1,500. The retainer was $1,500. Yep. How much did she say she had? She did not have all of it. Um, she could come up with about 1100 in which case the rest came out of my pocket. Okay, so she handed you $1,100. Um, I gave her the cash, and then we went down to the lawyer my next day off to get the ball rolling. You mean you gave your mother $400? Correct. And she wrote a check to the lawyer? A uh, cr uh, debit card, yes. Mrs. Gilbert? Yes. Is it correct that he put in 400, you put in 1100? Yes, it was actually 458 to be exact. And I just paid it on my debit card, the total 1500. Okay, but he gave you 458. Correct. I'm sorry, it was 468, I'm sorry. Okay. So let's finish off this attorney piece before we get to the car piece. You know, controlling children, which is clearly something that happened with your husband, made it difficult to see his children. So that means you using the children as a control, which is really not supposed to happen if you're a loving parent. Dawn Gilberts claims her son, Nathan Gilberts, and his wife, Hannah Gilberts, owes her for unpaid loans and car insurance. Now, the attorney appeared with you in court? We never went to court. I had ended up canceling the whole divorce thing due to the fact that me and the wife had come to terms, everything was okay. And that was in March or that April? It was in March, yes. Ms. Gilbert, did the attorney return any part of the retainer to you? Yes, she did. How much did um, she return? It was three seventy two fifty. Six sixty one. Six sixty one. Yeah. Minus his portion, yeah. Okay. Did your mother discuss the return of the six hundred and sixty one dollars to her? <laughs> Did you ever give her any money towards the eleven hundred dollars? I was waiting to give her money after the attorney had contacted me as far as what was returned to her, in which case I had made weekly payments thereafter. You made weekly payments? Yes. To your mother? Yes. The okay. first one was 200 and then there were $100 increments over the next three weeks. So you returned $200 to her? The first week, yes. And then? $100 a week, weekly. For, for how many weeks? Three weeks. So you still owe her $161. Is that where we're at? Yes. Okay. Mrs. Gilbert, did your son return to you $200 the first week, acknowledging the loan? No, ma'am. He did not? No, ma'am. I never received a $200 payment. How much did you receive in payments from him? Um, I received a total of $300. One on the May 15th, May 29th, and May 8th of $100 each. Do you have, Mr. Gilbert, any proof that you gave your mother a $200 payment towards the attorney's fees? No, I don't have the proof for the 200. I do have the proof for the uh, 200 thereafter. For 300 She no, said you made two. 300 Yes, I okay. cleaned out the truck and... Okie dokie. So we have 361 
Now let's talk about the car. When you and your wife separated, did you need a car? Um, I received this car in 20 of 18. Okay, explain to me the circumstances surrounding the as car. As far as the circumstances, right. um, there was an issue with my sister's vehicle that her my sister's vehicle no longer ran. My mother approached me as to if I wanted the vehicle or if I was just gonna keep the vehicle that I had already bought from her boyfriend okay. and my sister was gonna get the new vehicle. Okay, so this was a sort of an interfamily swap. And what arrangement did you make with regard to the car? Did you I, get a new car? Yes, I told my mother that I had just paid off a tool bill um, that I was able to give her 50 bucks a week, and I felt that that would be the best option as opposed to my sister not working at all, not being able to guarantee my mother any money whatsoever. Okay, so you wanted a new car? Yes. You wanted a new car. What kind of car did you get? It was a 2011 Ford Edge. Do you remember what you paid for it? Um, the total price was $4,200. Okay. Do you have the bill of sale? No, I do not. Do you? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to see it, please. Thank you. Right now, you got a newer car for 4509, and that's in 2018. Correct. Sarah, take a look and see if you can find a 2011 Ford Edge. It what? ranges from 4,200 to about 5,300. Today? Yes. In today's years. So that's probably right on. Okay. And how much of this 4509 did you pay back? I paid back a total of 3250. Is that correct? No, ma'am. You have receipts for these payments? I have the last two receipts of when they were paid off. That is all. At the time, me and my mother were on good terms. I just handed her cash on Saturdays that my wife would actually take the children up to see my mother on Saturdays. That's Every what, Saturday. what we did. I was working, so I wanted to make sure my mother was still seeing the grandchildren. You mean this is when you and your wife were together? Yes. Okay. How much is it, Mrs. Gilbert, that you allege that your son paid on the car? He paid $1,090 total. And he says he paid $3,250 on the car. That is incorrect. I told him um, approximately three weeks ago that he still owed $3,420, and he did agree to that via tax. Um, I'd like to see that. Are you counting in the money that you paid, Mr. Gilbert, because you were paying for not only the car, but the insurance? Uh, as far as the insurance, the insurance was something that was never agreed upon. She told me that she was gonna have her name on the registration, that way she was able to insure the vehicle. Just a second. Mr. Gilbert, so I asked you a simple question. What you didn't give me was a simple answer. Does the 3250 that you claim that you paid your mother did you pay a separate insurance policy on the car that you and your wife were driving? No. So I am correct that this 3250 encompasses both insurance and the car payment. No, it was just the car payment. Well, who paid for the insurance? My mother, ma'am. Ah, that's ridiculous, Mr. Gilbert. That's what Why I tried to you? explain to her. What do you mean you tried to explain that to her? I tried to, to explain her? to my mother that I did not need her to carry the insurance, that I had other vehicles, and it would have been cheaper for me to insure it with my other vehicles. But she insisted on having the insurance and... Just a second. Is the car in your name? It's in both of our names, my mother and I. Well, maybe it was to ensure that there was current insurance. What other vehicles do you have? I currently have a 1998 BMW. And my wife has a 2013 Toyota Corolla. You pay insurance on those cars? With Through. what company? Through. Uh, um, uh, nationwide. Uh, okay. The oh. total, after dropping the BMW, because that no longer runs, we pay 363 Just a second. So you currently only have a 2013 car and this car? Yes. That was purchased in 2018? Correct. And now, on the one car that you have, you pay 300 and... How much, how much did he say he paid on the one car that he has insured? It's 300 and something. Whew. Was Wait. for the Toyota and the BMW. Just as, no, you said you dropped the BMW. What you said was, we dropped the BMW because it's no longer running. Is that they, what he said? That's what he yep. said. And he, he said, said so the insurance is now 363. Yes, because there is a loan on the vehicle and it has to have full coverage. It's my vehicle, ma'am. I, I uh, carry high because I'm considered a liable driver being young with a loan. 
So my insurance is very expensive. So why would it have been cheap? With the Mr. Gill. With the multi-car discount. Oh, you're ridiculous. At the time that you said those very ugly things about your wife, you wanted your mother to believe you. Yes. All she knows is you told her some very angry and ugly things about your wife with whom you are now together. You can't do anything about that, Miss Gilbert. Dawn Gilbert is accusing her son, Nathan Gilbert, and his wife, Hannah Gilbert, of refusing to pay for a car loan and the insurance payments. So, now, pretty steep breakdown of a relationship between a mother and a son very quickly over a four-week period. Mr. Gilbert, how do you think that happened? Due to the fact of me getting back with my wife. <clears throat> my mother does not care for my wife. Um, after I told her that I was moving back home, she told me that her house was no longer a storage facility and I needed to come pick up my stuff, otherwise it would be sitting outside. So that should be a good lesson for your mother and for everybody else out there that, you know, until things sort of calm down with somebody else's relationship or marriage, it's a very good idea to keep your nose out of it. The problem with you and your mother is you had a close relationship with your mother. Yes. And I'm certain that at the time that you and your wife separated, you unburdened yourself to your mother. Yes. And when you unburdened yourself to your mother, without getting into the specifics of it, you said some very ugly things about your wife. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh yes. is not an answer. Yes. And at the time that you said those very ugly things about your wife, you wanted your mother to believe you. Yes. Because at the time you said those very ugly things about your wife, you believed them. Yes. See what happens? See, your mother doesn't have all the same elements that you do. She loves you. She clearly loves her grandson. All she knows is you told her some very angry and ugly things about your wife with whom you are now together. Yes. You can't do anything about that, Miss Gilbert. That's it. Right. That's it. I understand that. Y you got it. Can't do anything about that. It's his choice. But if you're a smart lady, Thank you. If you're a smart lady... Thank you. ...and if your son is smart, he'll recognize he has one mother. But the divorce rate in this country is better than 50-50, so chances are that you got a 50% shot. Right. You only have one mother. Mm hmm And it was a mother who was actually pretty good to you. For the most part, yes. Who clearly adores her grandson, who I don't know if she sees anymore. No, ma'am. All I'm telling you both is that that's being unfair to him. I understand. You know, controlling children, which is clearly something that happened at least for a short time with your husband, you control the children because it was clear that if he couldn't see the children with you and your mother made it difficult to see his children, so that means you were using the children as a control which is really not supposed to happen if you're a loving parent. I controlled their influences. No. What is supposed to happen is if you're a loving parent, you want the widest possible community of a village who love them to be part of them so that they can feel as if they have a safety net that they grow up with as many safety nets of love in their life as possible. So if you and your husband are off for an evening into a casino, and your car gets blindsided and T-boned, and both of you are gone, that there's a safety net for them. You don't want to take that away. It's unfair. In any event, I don't want to hear about this protective order, actually, Mrs. Gilbert. You survived it. Did you hire a lawyer for the protective order? No, ma'am. I just oh, okay. down and um, All right. So he owes you thirty-two fifty, which he actually sort of acknowledges for the car, and three sixty-one for the lawyer, which is 3611. Mr. Gilbert, Mrs. Gilbert, marriages go through rocks, up and down and up and down. You have a child, your child loves you. Clearly, your child had a relationship with his grandmother. Right. Yes. You sh really should find a way of making sure that that relationship continues. And you try to put a period, just as you put a period with the anger that you felt towards your wife. Yes. Right? Right. You put a period. Yes. 
I would try to do the same with my mother. Judge for the plaintiff, we're finished. Thank you. Court is adjourned. Uh, it was fair as far as the amount that was owed. I did not want to pay her what she was asking for. I'm glad that it's over with, and I hope everything gets taken care of. I find it to be petty. I tried to get this settled out of court. She refused to work any kind of deal out, and here we are. Being told I was being petty for wanting to be paid back. I have no idea. The fact that me getting back with my wife, I have no idea. That is true, but it's not my marriage, it's theirs. Um, they started off with a great relationship when me and my wife first got together when we were dating, and it seemed to tinker downhill. I hope our relationship can be put back together, I really do. Uh, if she can be cordial about it and not throw rocks, show up at my work threatening me. I just went and asked him if we could talk like adults. Then there's a possibility, yes. I'm glad it's over. As someone who was fortunate enough to grow up with many safety nets, I think that was a great lesson in there to the, both the defendants that taking away a child's safety net because of some sort of ill will or harbored resentment against a parent is just unfortunate, legal issue or not. So I thought that was a great lesson. I always feel sorry for grandparents who love their children and then get themselves involved with a breakup, which happens frequently, take sides right away before the situation has sort of calmed itself down and you see in what direction it's going. Maybe he'll listen. You know, I didn't know, but I'm sure he said a lot of nasty things about his wife when he went to live with his mother. She saw how hurt he was. She developed her own resentments. That spilled over. But, you know, you got to love your children. More than you hate each other. Right. <laughs> Are you having a family dispute? Go to judyjustice.tv.